Well, congratulations. This is so exciting. And thank you so much for coming today and sharing this with the Columbia community, of which you are a big part. Um, so would you first um, give us a little bit of an um, overview of just kind of the background of how this film came about? Because it has a unique history, um, a lot of it tied to Columbia. So if you could just talk a little bit about that and, and how you got from A to Z. Um, well, I knew the, the lead of our film, Brandon Plansky, for about 15 years, by uh, now 15 years. Um, and I got inspired to make this story at the time when he met his first girlfriend um, at this very community that we ended up shooting in. And I kind of got really involved in that relationship and some drama that arose and started the idea as a feature um, more based on his relationship with his family and kind of conflicts within the family based on this new love. Um, and then I had the opportunity, because I was at Columbia, to make my thesis, and I thought this would be, if we were going to do the feature, I felt like it would be, like I wanted to work with Brandon as himself, as a, or a character based on him. So I would do the short film um, as a kind of test of that. And so um, made the short, and making the short took two years for like the, the writing of it. I worked with Brandon for a year on acting exercises and um, uh, auditioned like 100 neurotypical actresses, professional actresses, to play the role of Sarah. And so it, it kind of took, it was a process for me to discover that no, we really had to go wholeheartedly with commitment toward working with uh, this neurodivergent cast. Um, and I was at the time also in Ramin Barani's thesis class, and he was a huge creative, he's one of our you know, creative advisor on the film, and he was a real support. Um, but when we made the short film, I, fo I kind of found like actually the love story was the most compelling part of the story to me. So we focused it on that. And then when we went back to develop the feature, I kind of just threw away the old drafts and uh, built it on the love story. And also in the process of researching for the short film, I had gotten to know some wonderful people in the community and uh, decided to really contain the story within that world. And I worked then for two years on the feature with other supporting cast there to uh, create fictional versions of themselves. Um, yeah. Wow. So when was, the fir when was the beginning of the short? When did you start that till now? How long? Uh, 2011. 2011. Started, started the short. Wow. F graduated in 2013 with right. that as my thesis. Wow. And then two years for after that, continued wow. development on the feature. So six-year journey. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, Kurt, could you tell us a little bit about the, um, we just talked about the origin story of this film. Can you talk a little bit about the origin story of the two of you together? Because there's a big connection with Columbia. Um, yeah, sure. Um Every so often, the School of the Arts has networking breakfasts. <laughs> and um, I probably said yes to a bunch of them and never showed up because they're too early. And um, I was very fortunate uh, to actually get to one of the breakfasts on time um, where uh, you know, I met Rachel. So you guys weren't at school at the same time? No, we didn't overlap, yeah. So you were um, an alum at this time? Right, yeah. I was going basically to try and find, you know, projects that I'd be interested in, you know, potentially collaborating with, um, you know, fellow alumni. And um, what our a professor that we share in common, Eric Mendelson, kind of, um, you know, introduced us together and we spoke about what we're working on and Rachel said oh I want to make this you know uh, feature film about uh, you know two adults on the autism spectrum and I said oh you know before you make your feature you've got to check out this amazing short film and I, I sort of gave her like a beat beat by beat you know uh, um, description of this film, this amazing film that I saw at the Columbia Film Festival, <laughs> or maybe it was on the DVD or something like that. I was a big enthusiast. And, uh, of course, Ra Rachel said, um, you yeah, know, that's my film. <laughs> um, and uh, I guess we, you know, we made, we made um, uh, an appointment to talk uh, over coffee or uh, tea uh, about a week later, and... Um, I'll let you finish that one. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, we talked about the, we, well, I was also looking for locations, right, because we are going to talk about locations, because you're, Kurt works a lot as a locations manager, so I wanted to know about shooting in Coney Island. We talked about Coney Island for about 10 minutes and had coffee for seven hours. <laughs> um, and the rest, they say, is history. Yeah. So so um, <laughs> last last June, you, you guys got married, yeah. and now you have a little baby yeah. who's with us today. It's Charlotte. So <laughs> it's a wonderful story. Um also, you know, anybody who knows kind of some of their, their um, cohorts from Columbia will n- recognize them from the movie. There's lots of extras who have cameos, some people here today. Um, I noticed that, Kurt, you were actually the homeless man on the street. And then your, your uh, partner in crime, Giovanni, was also another homeless person. So I thought that was very interesting that the kind of production side of things took those roles. <laughs> Um, I don't know what that means, but it leads me to another question, which is funding. Um, the difficulty of funding a film like this. So could you talk a little bit about how were you able to get the funds to make this film um, as a feature, which is a very different proposition than a short? Yeah, sure. Um, well, I guess, you know, it's sort of daunting at first. I'm, um, you know, I kind of, I tend to work on, you know, bigger movies, um, and you know it was clear that we were uh you know going to have to essentially build this from scratch uh we started a um a crowdfunding campaign on a on a website called seed and spark and um all of our friends and loved ones um you know got us to our our threshold so we could get funded um under under that uh um you know, chunk of the money, and while it wasn't, uh, you know, enough to pay for the film, it showed uh, investors that basically, you know, we uh, have some financial backing already, um, and paired with Rachel's short film, which was kind of an amazing calling card, um, sort of, you know, uh, sort of, we had a proof of concept already, and an equity investor came in um, basically to give us a nice big chunk. And then, um, you know, uh, Rachel's gotten a number of grants, uh, you know, from the Sundance Institute, uh, the Princess Grace Foundation. um, And uh, so we've, you know, had some grant money come in 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 post as well. Um, So it's sort of uh, cobbled together from, you know, multiple sources. So I'm going to ask one more question before we open it up to the audience. Can you give us a little bit of a sense of the creative process on this? You have um, uh, professional actors, um, you know, Je- Jessica Walters and a couple of other recognizable actors, and you also have non-professional actors. Can you talk a little bit about that process of rehearsal? And was there a script? Was it just an outline? Give us a little bit of sense of that because it's it's a very dynamic you know, experience watching this. I, I feel like it's so alive, you know, and it's just so real uh, that it just has its its own little kind of feeling to it that rubs off on on the film itself. And I'd love to hear a little bit more about how you did that. Thank you. Um, yeah, I had, when we made the short film, I uh, had written that through, um, again, like a year, a year of acting exercises with Brandon, and I followed the same model when working with the larger cast. Um, which was the first the first thing was this commitment to these are the people I wanted in the film and I just had you know I didn't know like for the supporting cast didn't necessarily know how they would initially work into the story but I felt they all belonged in the same film together and they're all part of the same social circle at that community so they have these existing relationships upon which we could kind of grow these blossoms you know um, so I would just meet with them and you know eventually. I would take that what I got back and kind of start sketching ideas and eventually maybe discuss it with them. I had to take a different approach with each cast member. Um, Brandon could, when we got close to production, he could totally read the script multiple times and he could take the words and do them or play off of them, you know, whichever. Samantha, who plays Sarah, she read the script once, both when we made the short and the feature, and after that we set it aside so that she knew what the story was, she knew what we were going for in each scene, but uh, it was better for her to not... She would get rigid if she felt like she was had to stick to the script. So 
Um, Nikki, who plays Sammy, the kind of flamboyant theater director in this, he's the only one of the main cast that never read the script because he was so taken with this idea that he was going to be directing in the film. So I just gave him that project, and he had written like a 100-page play that he cast, and so those rehearsals were actually his directing his play. Um, and yeah, and and then Will, who plays the uh, the competitive boyfriend, he's super intellectual and can actually could talk about his character, both from kind of what would he thought would be an emotionally compelling scene to write for him, and then he could also step back and actually value it and realize, well, maybe yeah, that kind of jars with other things in the film, which is actually unique for any actor to be able to step back in that kind of director's head. And, and understand that so it was different with each and that was uh, a huge kind of joy and challenge for me as a director to, to have to step into those different uh, and managers. how how was the interplay between the professional actors and 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 the the team that you put together from from the rehearsals and all that it was great uh jessica and tibor were with us who tibor also plays the father they were with us for i think it was just two days right or two two and a half two or three days um their total pros and have you know have probably seen it all in terms of type performance styles so um they stepped in and even though i think both in making the short and the feature is that when there's a group scene with these professional and the non-professional actors the professional actors did so much to help the performances of the non-professional actors they gave so much even if they knew they weren't going to be on camera for that but they were there making the situation feel real and the non-professional actors are um even though you know non-professional actors they're they really worked as actors they worked with uh you know scene objectives and circumstances Wonderful. Well, let's open up some questions from the audience. Um, yes, right there. Um, I think we can hear you and I'll repeat it on mic. I, I have two questions. I'm sorry if I missed this. So Sarah in, in the movie had an LD and, and she was autistic. Uh, in, the, in real life, is she autistic and does she have a learning disability? That's a question. Yes. She, she does. So, so the, the woman who plays Sarah in the film, the question was just what was her background? She has a learning dis- uh, language processing disability, and um, she's on the spectrum, yeah. And same thing with Brandon as well, right? He does not have a language processing disability. He is, yes, he's on the spectrum, and he also has uh, Tourette's, which is the tics that you see. Yeah. One thing I didn't catch in the, in the, in the plot, so not in the plot, so it looked like from the movie that he created that Brandon seemed like a typical high school teenager going to the prom. Was there an accident that he had, a car accident? I didn't catch, I didn't follow. So the, the question was, um, was there any kind of um, change that happened in his life um, that made the change? Because there was a little question about the confusion about that part of the storyline. Yeah, the, the back story that we're working with um, is Brandon was always on the spectrum. He always had autism, but at the high school was this, for him, kind of traumatic period when he saw other people going on to achieve get things in life that he couldn't get and he had a breakdown and at that point the tics manifest and over time they've kind of grown more and more out of his control so for him he looks at this juncture with high school as oh i had things under control before then and then after that i lost control but in watching the film we don't intend for you to understand all of that um yeah it's just the backstory I think we have time for another question. Uh, yes, right there. What's your goal to achieve through this movie? What, what's your, like, your own opinion to tell us people about this movie? What's your goal with this film? So, um, my goal artistically uh, is, well, to make an enter- hopefully an entertaining, um, moving love story that uh, transcends the subject of disability. I think that, yeah. One more, yes. Yes. I was so moved by it, and it just showed how how we, myself, can judge people that of their own limitations. But the mother was very judgmental and didn't uh, want to see her son's um, strangeness either. And you, you really showed that at that scene why you fell in love with uh, Sarah. So it was uh, beautiful. 
So it was a comment on how beautiful the film was, particularly the mother's character being judgmental and how that was quite moving. Well, thank you all very much. We are going to now move over to Harry's Italian, which is just uh, two doors down from the entrance you came in, and we'll have a reception there. Thank you so much.